Okay. All right, welcome. This is, uh, my name is Steve, M52Go, and we're recording the, uh, this call, kind of a recap of the first week of BISC's March, Make the Markets March uh, liquidity campaign that we, uh, that we started, that we kicked off this week. I wanna go over the overarching goals for the campaign, what we've done so far this week, a little bit about what we've achieved, and some feedback on, on how that's gone so far so that we can adapt and do better next week, as well as tips for getting involved. If you wanna get involved, help with the publicity, marketing, content, uh, even liquidity efforts, what, how you can get involved and help us out with that. So, yeah, how does that sound? Anything, anything else you guys would like to, to cover? Just feel free to shout out or put in chat as, uh, as, we, as we move forward. So, starting out with the overarching goal of the campaign, uh, of course, we want to increase liquidity on the network. We, uh, the BISC network in general has gone through some pretty significant changes and pretty significant updates over the past several months. Uh, in particular, 1.2, version 1.2 when it launched at the end of October was a very, very big update. And once we got the bugs worked out of that version with you know, the later point releases, really got in a good spot for really intentionally and purposefully pushing for growth. So that's where we are now. Uh, the month of March, we see it as, I see it as a progressive campaign. So this week was, more focused on getting new users involved, people who hadn't used it before, just how do you download the software, verify the binaries, install it, back everything up, uh, minimal fuss, minimal complication. The videos we put out were like one or two minutes. Um, I think feedback in general was pretty good about those. Um, we've done light promotion. So we had maybe, well, we had posts on the Bitcoin Reddit, the Monero Reddit and the Monero the XMR Trader uh, subreddits. One day of notice, so not a whole lot of lead time, um, not really much else, but I think we, I'll go into numbers in a second, I think we're doing fairly well. Um, didn't wanna go all in on the first week of the campaign, so as we move forward, we'll introduce bots. So uh, this is kind of experimental, but bots for Twitter to tweet out good offers, uh, and then bots for Telegram and Reddit for people to just, you know, if you want to know what, what, what's the order book look, or the offer book looking like in a particular market when you're on Telegram in a group, just, you know, ping the inline BISC offer bot and you'll see it right there. Something maybe useful, we'll see. Um, posting on Reddit for longer, possibly getting stickies in some of the key subs for four or five days or longer in advance of upcoming liquidity days being more active in more, some, of the, uh, some of the Telegram communities, uh, as well as maybe later on, three or four weeks from now, uh, partnering with media, so Bitcoin Magazine uh, and some other folks, uh, Coindesk, that we have contacts at, really just pushing as hard as possible to um, increase awareness of our, of our campaign. And of course, we have Bitcoin 2020, the big conference in San Francisco at the end of the month, March 27th. We have a big showing plan there big booth, uh, lots of cool stuff planned. So we're hoping to really end this month long drive with an extravaganza in person. So yeah, that's the over, overview of, of our campaign goals and how we kind of wanna move forward with those. In terms of numbers, we, so what I'd like to see again, progressively increasing numbers every week. Today, the goal was, or goal is 1000 offers go online in, throughout the day, the 24 hour period of March 5th, and to see 200 trades complete in that same period. Now, right now, we are at 622 offers have gone live so far today. And the last I checked, we were at about 100 trades today. So we're probably, I mean, we still have 
about 10 hours left in the day, according to the Eastern time zone. So we might fall a little bit, little bit short, but I think it's, it's still a very strong trading day in the scheme of things. And yeah, it's a good foundation to build on for the rest of the month. So, what else? Okay, any, any uh, comments or, or, or questions so far? All right, cool. So from my side, I'm fairly new now to the new BISC client. Yeah. And what I did was mainly open some offers, buy and sell actually and just okay. see whether they are taken or not. If you have been taken, so that's cool. Awesome. So glad, glad to I have I think I'll mainly that. look into... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll mainly look into providing some liquidity in awesome. that regard. Awesome. It's, it's good, to have, uh, good to have people on the sell side right now. We're, we're <laughs> a little short on that. Um, cool, okay. so. What did we do so far? I guess I covered that already with Twitter campaign posts on the major subreddits. And then we're going to um, increase that, the intensity of those efforts in the coming weeks. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's see, next week. Yeah, I guess we can cover what the next week's goals and, and, and activities. So. Next week, we want to add on to our start, the start that we made this week of uh, guides on how to download and verify and install the software to actually, how do you use it? Okay, you, you've downloaded it, you've, you've installed it, and you've set it up, you're backed up, you're ready to go. Now what? In, in the time that I've been speaking to, to users about their primary difficulties of using BISC. It's the interface, like just the first impressions of what the heck am I looking at causes, it seems like it causes most people to just give up and close the program from my conversation. So we're going to have a tour of the interface, quick one minute. What are you looking at when you download an, an, an open BISC? What are the different screens? What do you do? Um, and just making that very simple. It looks confusing, but it's really not. There's a buy screen, a sell screen, accounts. That's really all you have to know to start. So we'll, we'll um, make that as clear as possible. Uh, go into setting up payment accounts. So I think one thing that is not very clear to people is uh, a lot of people ask, well, where do I deposit my fiat? Where do I put my euros or my US dollars? Where does that go? Because that's the traditional flow of using an exchange uh, a centralized exchange. So people don't understand that paradigm shift with BISC and that you don't do that. You have to set up a payment account. Um, and then when you go to set up a payment account, what kind of account do you pick? There's like 20 accounts and not all of them work as well as some others. So explaining how to set up the payment account and also including guidance on what are the best payment accounts to actually set up based on where you are, your market is. Benefits and drawbacks of bank-related payment accounts, cash-based payment accounts, like face-to-face -face money orders. Um, some people don't want to deal with banks, and so they should know that they have options on BISC to do that. And yeah, so, and then, the, yeah, the third thing would be making and taking offers. So once you are aware of the interface and how it works, you have payment accounts set up that you like, that, that work for you, then actually making and taking an offer. So those are the, 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 the three things that we're going to target next week to um, really break down and make super simple to get more people online and using BISC. And uh, hopefully will be another element of the way we can increase liquidity on next Thursday's liquidity event. So uh, did anybody here go through the, the guides that we, that we put through by any chance? I was curious if, uh, if, any feedback on those? Okay, no problem. All right, and then I guess, what else could we cover? 
user concerns. Talked about most of that already. Let me chat. Let me check the chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we found out a number of, I mean, this was, I think, overall a positive experience in that it seems like a lot of people who didn't know about this before now know about it. Um, there was a thread that we put out on Monday about why BISC, just 10 thread or 10 tweets, very simple, breaking it down in a, in a way that I think a lot of people kind of, it, it, it was approachable and understandable for a lot of people. So I think it brought a lot of people into the fold. Um, so building on that with how to use BISC in a very simple way was good. Also got a lot of feedback on the interface and some quirks there. Uh, for example, it's not always clear. So, so it, when you create an offer, it's not clear to some people about uh, that it's possible to set percentage-based pricing. Uh, that's the very core part of making an offer on BISC that uh, I think people need to be people need to know and needs to be very clear. So um, there's also like uh, when you go when you, when you go through different screens, the currency isn't always the same. So if you've picked Euro on one screen, if you go to another screen, you'll get USD sometimes or whatever. So that's kind of a quirk that we can't fix with a video. Of course, we have to fix with another release. But um, point the reason I'm saying all this is that we we're, we're we're watching the difficulties that people are facing and putting them, in, recording them, and putting them, uh, uh, disseminating them to the developers and other folks to uh, to cover them and address them to make the the software better and the communications better. So with that, I mean, the last thing I have on the agenda is to talk about contributions. If you are interested in helping with any of the stuff that we're doing this month or otherwise, how to help. So um, we have, let me check the chat one more time. Promote a way to get sellers. Yes. Promote as a way to bring sellers by arbitrage. Bitcoin ATMs often charge five to fifteen percent over spot price for privacy. Maybe this so can attract. Just a, an idea that I had that, that already the market shows that people are willing to pay more for privacy. Yeah. But here we're just saying buy privately, but not necessarily sellers, hey, come and take advantage of that and maybe try to get some more sellers there. Uh, yes. the, the Bitcoin ATMs are profitable because they always have a big margin and they're all over the place. I always just go check it out for curiosity. This could be kind of like an ATM in every home, the positioning or something uh, with, with the BIS client. Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Maybe that's something, yeah, we should, maybe we should explore that, that approach. Mm -hmm. And some folks have very easy access to Bitcoin, so they have exchanges or other things where they could try to make money on the spread uh, or they mine or, or something. Yeah. But for a lot of folks, BISC is the only way they have a way into Bitcoin. So there, there's also maybe a little bit of willingness, even if it's not just privacy, it's a willingness to pay a little bit more because it's better than any alternative they have locally. Mm. Very awesome. Thank you for bringing yeah, that up. Place a little bit into what I'm trying to do. So, I mean, part of it is trying out different options. I actually created a monogram order just to see how that works. Yeah. Um, but also for me, it's super easy to get new Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's worthwhile for me, and I don't want to make a ton of money, but maybe a little bit, it's, it's very easy for me to create liquidity. So I think that's a good, good approach to bring in people even if you make like two percent per trade of course you need to be aware of the re regulatory implications or whatever but that's that can be worthwhile and helpful for the mm -hmm. ecosystem mm -hmm. yeah. yeah for sure and when it comes to fiat so one thing that uh i actually didn't mention that we're we're going to try to do is uh, so swift bank wires basically in a, in a nutshell allowing fiat trades to be bigger quicker 
So right now, when you when you download Bisk, you you're limited to 0.01 Bitcoin for most payment methods, which is huge. It's a huge roadblock for anybody who wants to trade, you know, meaningful amounts of Bitcoin, and it's a big buzzkill for anyone who wants to use Bisk, because you download it and you kind of feel like your hands are tied for a month. So it's it sucks. And um, so we, we've been looking into uh, bank wires. We're hopefully going to have bank wires in the next release of Bisk, which should be in six days from now if things go on schedule um i mean bank wires are almost irreversible and so you would not need signing and you would be able to trade a fairly significant amount at once so we're hoping that will help with uh with liquidity on the fiat side and um and also, then on the kind of fiat side is yeah. right now for example altcoins are instantly settled yeah uh, but if we had more stable coins that that's almost like a fiat alternative without having to go through the, the, the jumping hoops of the, the bank. Yeah, we need to do that. We, we were talking about putting in Tether, but I don't know what happened to that. So I'll, um, we need to pay more attention to that. Thank you for bringing it up. I'll add that to the list. Do you have any particular stable coins that are, I don't, I'm not very familiar with the market of stable coins. Is, are there some that are better than others? It's just, I just look at the folks that are going to be into privacy. They're probably not going to buy on Coinbase and then send to here. But yeah. if they're on an exchange that doesn't have a non-ramp, a fiat on-ramp uh, for better privacy, mm -hmm. then they're using Tether, USDT, USDC, some of those stable coins. They have a way to get those stable coins privately so that they can bring that from a liquidity perspective into BISC. Okay. Cool. Oh, and then the other thing you mentioned, um, Staticus, you mentioned MoneyGram. So I think that's another thing people are not aware of in, in terms of uh, MoneyGram, Western Union, and I think there's another one called RIA, at least in the U.S., uh, where you can, they, they, so you can do the, the in-person cash uh, sending and in-person cash withdrawal, but you can also use, there, there's an electronic sending service where you can still have cash pickup you can also send electronically, which is a lot more convenient. I'm not, I'm not sure a lot of people know about that. So I think maybe, you know, being better about communicating uh, some of these payment methods could, could help as well. Yeah. Mm. Just not too sure about the fees that you have to pay. The fees I've are not good. Talk with, yeah. yeah. No, I, I actually, I've been doing some yeah. business with people from Africa and they're doing like um, real time gross settlement sending stuff mm. and they're paying like 30 to 50 bucks for like sending no. two thousand dollars so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i guess another point with the the fiat issue is that it limits you to your almost your own country right so if i trade in pesos it's only with mexico if i trade in dollars it's only with the u.s where the stable coin maybe if there's liquidity in europe i can access that uh from somewhere else Solid, yes. Yeah, we have. I guess it's a very different target audience, though. So if if you're talking going to a like a, a corner shop selling cigarettes and sending some money, cash, mm -hmm. it's definitely a totally different target audience than somebody who has private access to stable coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, would be nice. Okay. Cool. Right. So aside from liquidity, so liquidity is certainly important. And um, we have in emerging markets, so we have, I guess, two focuses of liquidity. The focus of this, mar of this campaign in March is established markets, so the euro, US dollar, and Monero. And those markets are relatively mature. Obviously, they're not perfect. There's still a lot of holes in them as far as liquidity goes. But um, there, I don't know. Typically for, for new markets, we have bounties. So we have you know, a thousand dollar bounty for somebody who's willing to put up four offers, two buy, two sell throughout the course of a month and try to kickstart a market with whatever marketing that they can do in that local market. We don't have any such bounties for established markets. I'm not sure if that's something we could consider. Uh, 
part of the reason we don't do it is that it's just hard to measure. I mean, unless the market maker gives their onion address and we can monitor which offers are online when, it's hard to know if the person is actually doing their job or not. But um, do you guys have any thoughts there of uh, somehow incentivizing, I don't know if you do it by payment method, if that makes sense, or by, um, you know, if, if you want more sell offers, then I don't know. Is that something that you think could help? Or should it be more organic? I, I think, I mean, there's one thing, the alerts of a good offer kind of idea is interesting from the bots. Yeah. But also if you say, hey, there's, if you add up all those offers, there's four Bitcoins of demand at 3% of our spot, then someone can look at it as an arbitrage opportunity. I mean, if you get those kind of alerts, someone with liquid, someone can bring liquidity on demand instead of always being on this, always trying to say, hey, is there someone there? Mm -hmm. It's just an alert there that, that attracts folks that are willing to do the work for a two or 3% gain without any risk. Mm -hmm. But again, that'll, right now, if, if the offers are in USD, that'll only attract folks that are willing to sell at USD and things like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess once you have a baseline liquidity in place for an existing market, my gut feeling would be that it doesn't really help in the long term to like bribe people into right. get the, uh, reviving the or, or growing the market because then after the bounty runs out, it's just gone again. So right. identifying the issue or the, the hurdles that yeah, or the roadblocks that are in place why there is no organic growth is probably what much more worthwhile. Right, right, I agree. I think that the bounty we have right now for, so we have one, one bounty right now for Monero, which is a very strong market on BISC, but the bounty is interesting. The bounty, it's a big bounty. It's a 5,000 US dollar bounty. And I think the, if I remember correctly, the goal is to increase Monero trading volume by 25% over, I think it's a three month period. And that's it. And if you look at trading volume right now for Monero per month, it's probably about four to 500 Bitcoin. So over a three month period, that's, you know, 1,000, 1,500 Bitcoin. So 25% increase would be pretty significant. And the idea is that someone, whoever wants to, take this on would come up with the strategy, take on the cost and, and come up with the creativity or creative ways to actually do this in such a way that the payoff is greater than the cost of the bounty. The issue in the case of fiat markets is that the trade sizes are so small right now that even if you were able to increase trading activity by probably even 50%, uh, no, I think that would actually work. But the, the numbers are much closer. I mean, you can't, you, you, even if you, yeah. Increases in trade activity don't correlate to the same kind of profitability that, uh, that an altcoin like Monero does, so. But, okay. All right, so good ideas on liquidity. As far as other stuff like marketing and communications, we have a Kanban board. I have linked to it in the, uh, the growth channel on Keybase. If you're interested in um, making any of the videos we have coming or guides or graphics or whatever. Uh, so if anyone here would be interested in that, that's how to do that. And yeah, I guess we'll, we'll kind of do the same thing next week, but hopefully with a little bit more intensity, a little bit more of a focus on getting people actually trading and hopefully with higher numbers. So, oh, Probably, probably to determine numbers for next week based on the ultimate results for today. So we'll probably tweet that out later today or probably tomorrow and go from there. Anything else you guys would like to cover? I appreciate your, uh, your, your, your efforts and getting these markets more liquid.
Yeah, looking forward to Bitcoin 2020. Maybe we can do uh, some live uh, trading there. Oh, that's right. You're, you're coming, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Cool. That's yeah, great. I uh, sent the guy, I sent the organizers a, a message earlier today just confirming that it's still on because there's this, this panic with the virus, and particularly in San Francisco. So, but he hasn't responded yet. So, I don't know. Hoping it still happens. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's still calm because they're not testing people yet. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So to comment to the new European perspective, I find it incredible that not like stuff like Comic Con and uh, South to Southwest and Bitcoin 2020 is still on. In Switzerland, yeah. everything is, is forbidden over 1,000 people. Oh, really? But so even soccer, ice hockey, everything is canceled. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about. You don't have a problem if you don't test, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until you do, and then... Uh, don't yeah. test, don't tell. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Cool. All right. all right. Well, thank you guys for joining and for all your other efforts. And hopefully we can have a call next week with bigger numbers and, and uh, more success. Let's see. Awesome. See you on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> see you guys. Yep. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.